started Gather Make Shelter in 2016, and it was going to be a one-year community collaborative project with the housed and unhoused so that we could meet each other at our base level of humanity and do extraordinary creative things together. And I'm an artist. I show, I travel, I do all kinds of things. It was going to be a one-year project. Well, at the end of it, it turned into a giant festival at Pioneer Courthouse Square involving over 600 people experiencing houselessness and poverty and another additional 1,000 people that were donators or volunteers or ceramic artists. And at the end of that big celebration, the artists, the philanthropists, and everybody else said, what do we get to do next? And I was like, oh, next. So that was very interesting because two of the artists met during that time, a person who was experiencing houselessness and a Sarah Wolf, a potter. And um, I, I introduced them at the festival and every single time Mikey, who's the painter, would go into a workshop, he would pick one of Sarah's bowls. So I thought, I gotta hook these guys up because they really are gonna wanna know each other. And so I hooked them up and um, they met and then I just observed their conversation and I thought, ooh, this is what we could do next. We could have a deeper, deliberately collaborative project where ceramic artists could come together with painters and work for a period of time and create a new project called the Gather Make Shelter Academy. And so the Academy project is something that, you know, Martha and the gallery so generously decided that they were going to support and this show was supposed to happen a year ago. And then COVID hit and everything we wanted to do, bring people together, have meals, community, create, keep building, was impossible and illegal. So um, we shifted and we carefully crafted one-on-ones. For the, in the beginning, we didn't see each other at all, like, like most people. And then over the course of time, we, we shifted and people met one-on-one -on -one and we carefully, carefully, carefully built what you see today. I came to Portland in 1989 to be a resident at the Oregon College of Art and Craft. And even though hardly anybody knows my ceramic work, because I'm a very multimedia installation artist, um, I have deep roots in the ceramic um, world. And coming here through the ceramic community, I just, ceramic people gravitate towards each other. It's very communal by nature. People need each other to help fire, to do things, and um, it's, a, it's a wonderful community in Portland, and the Portland area has an incredible group of very talented and, and respected ceramic artists. So I reached out to a bunch of people in the ceramic world initially and said, would you throw some bowls for this project? That was for the, the first stage. The way that I paired people up was because so many people got together to throw bowls together and be together, they're like, what else do we get to do that was part of that group? Also, I spend a lot of time on the ground. The Gathering Shelter project is beyond this project that you see here. When the uh, pandemic hit, I was asked to join a coalition called C3PO, which is creating conscious communities with people outside. And I was part of a group of people that helped develop the three villages that are C3PO in town. Alternative, it's the alternative shelter model that's actually inspired the city to have more alternative shelters because of the success of C3PO. And I've been on the ground with people in different agencies and groups and camps since I started the project in 2017. So it's deep relationship building. And then it was, you know, I became a matchmaker. I was like, this person works like this. This might be good for that person. This person works like that. I could see this coming together. I was thinking about personalities and style and how we could come together. So what I would start with is uh, a meal. So we got together for breakfast or lunch or we went to someone's studio. I had pictures of everybody's work that they did before. They were informed about each other and I would say, well, all of those things turned into successful, like, yeah, let's do this. Now, unfortunately, in the process of the project, we've lost a couple of people, a couple of people have died. Um, a couple of people have left because uh, COVID has been difficult and life circumstances have, have taken them elsewhere. And in that time, I, because I'm on the ground so much, I continue to, to sort of mine the resources of the community and figure out other talented artists who could be paired up. So some of the people in the show actually have two collaborators. 
like a ceramic artist started with one person and then that person actually finished work that's in this exhibition but then they they left for one reason or another and I brought somebody else in during this year to um, to work with them again Mary Daniels was a really amazing artist. Um, we're highlighting some other videos in the exhibition you'll be able to see of Mary's actually speaking about the project. She was a 77, an incredible poet, artist, painter, editor in London evidently in her earlier life. Really, really amazing person and Mary and I just really connected deeply. Mary would help write grants. She was a huge supporter of the project in many ways. She'd speak publicly about it, and she did this beautiful work. Mary was in the first workshop at Street Roots. Mary and I just kind of became fast friends and deep collaborators on the essence of what you, you know Gather Make Shelter to be now. Unfortunately, after that first year, um, Mary died. And that was really, really hard. That was, that was my first death of a project participant and, um, and also someone who I'm so close to. It's really great to be able to show these two works together because the piece that I'm showing of my work is actually called Still Here, and it's about Mary. So it's a very direct connection to Mary. Mary was very salty and very lovely and very kind of coarse. And when she died, I had a dream about her. I had a dream that I was at Street Roots and I was teaching a workshop and she appeared. And I looked to the back of the room and I said, what are you doing here? And, and she said, oh, Dana, you're so simple. And, and then, she, then she said, I'm still here. And, and then after the workshop, or in the dream, after the workshop, she came up to me and she said, she said, I'm still here, Dana. I'm working on this project with you to the end. And so that piece is an homage to Mary. And um, I didn't make it just for this exhibition. It was made for Mary. So for the most part, everybody you see in the room is paired one by one. And this group on, on this wall is all work that's done by Rob Lamb. Rob Lamb is an incredible architect, artist, and um, he lives in Portland. And he did this also beautiful piece that's at the end of the row. He does Anagama wood-fired wood ceramics, and he has a couple different kilns that he works out of. Well, the first year that we did our project, Rob was one of the people that, de that threw lots of pots for us. Every single time somebody painted on a Rob Lamb bowl, it was just out of the park amazing. Not only because the object is so beautiful, but something about it, everybody was able to just like knock it out of the park. So I asked Rob if he would make a bowl for each of the project participants and that we would come together with a simple assignment of just white mm -hmm. and that everybody would do whatever it is that they do on a Rob Lamb bowl. There's so many interesting things about that project, but also all the artists in the exhibition, the gallery has generously made the decision for all the people who have contributed the pots that are um, from the people who are experiencing houselessness, that they get 100% of the proceeds. With the Rob Lamb bowls, the artists came together and said, well, what can we do for Gather Make Shelter? Because you're, you're not getting anything from this. You're, we're, the groups, it's very much a we project. We're, how do we do this to continue? And so everybody decided the sales of the Rob Lamb bowls will go together, make shelter. It's really great how housed and unhoused people all equally see this as, a, as how can I give? And, and, and it's not just like we give to them and they take. Everybody, everybody feels like they want to continue this project and want to be part of it and want to figure out how to manifest abundance together. Sarah classically has uh, works in terracotta and does incredible dinnerware and Sarah donated these pots to the project and like I said Michael who's the artist Michael Compost I met Michael at the Estate Hotel in one of the early pro one of the early workshops 
And when I go into the teach these workshops, it's not like paint your own ceramics. It's painting and drawing and entrepreneurial skill building relative to ceramics. And Michael really hooked into these Native American books that I brought in. And there were several Native American artists in this particular group. In fact, another one is in this exhibition as well. Michael just really got deep with it. And he also did, never considered himself an artist before. Several people in this exhibition, including Mary, have been artists their whole lives. But Michael didn't consider himself an artist before. And he just took off. He started exploring. He went to the library. I gave him assignments to go check out this or that or the Hopi or what. He also found out who his people were, which are a combination of Hopi and Apache. And then Michael would go explore all these things. And he met with Sarah and he said, can you make me these forms? So Sarah is now making forms for Michael that she hadn't made before because of their discussion, which is so gorgeous. Sarah was very enchanted and there's, there's a little video clip of them too on a video that we'll be sharing. She said, you know, that, that I, was, I really like painting black and white simply on terracotta and that's what Michael focused on too. And they have a very sweet friendship now. It's really, it's really great. So Jamin London Tinsel is a, is a lovely ceramic artist who teaches at Grant High School. One of the elements of her work is that she makes these pieces that have holes in them and then she ties them together with bungee cords. And they're, they're, they're pieces that have many components that are st strung together that way. Well, I introduced her to Jessie and she brought those pieces saying, I'm thinking of these kinds of pieces. Jesse um, has done a lot of kind of like anime and cartoon, graphic-y kind of work, and I just thought that would be a very interesting on those forms. But also, like, I thought something, but I really lightly shepherded these people and let them, like, take it where they were going to take it. And I didn't want to say, oh, you're together because you both do this. It wasn't like that. So anyway, we're hanging out in the parking lot in my studio after we had breakfast at the dockside, and Je and Jamin's pulling out these forms. And Jesse was like, "These are really cool, you know." And so she said, "Well, why don't I just make you a bunch of forms, and and you can take it where you take it." I don't know if Jesse would describe it this way, but um, it looks like a self-portrait to me. But I don't know if that would be his description or not. So Maddie Dubin is actually the ceramic wrangler for the project. Maddie's been my right hand person throughout many stages of this show. Maddie's really interested in material and Maddie's ceramics expression with this piece, it's cloth. And Maddie kneads um, clay into this cloth and uses the cloth to create other sculptures. So it's not traditional like a ceramic, right? It's very, it's very interesting and very conceptually beautiful. Maddie is paired with Mia, and Mia is, is really a, a, an amazing artist who's a painter, multimedia artist. Uh, Mia and I met through C3PO, and Mia lives uh, in one of the villages there. And they're just, just, they've just got really great energy. And also when I brought them together, and that was the most recent collaboration, is the two of them. And they saw what Maddie, Maddie made these simple forms pinched together and um, out of clay and they're not cloth and and that's what Mia, Mia's been working on. I love how they look together. I think that they actually look really beautiful together. Yeah, Tom is very interesting. Thomas did a wall piece and it's very calm and abstract and and very different from other work that I've seen of Thomas. Thomas was paired with Will and they had a great time. And Will and he worked in, Thomas invited him into his studio to work there. Um, other people worked in my studio and Thomas said, don't come work with me. Will and Thomas just had a really deep connection about many layers of things that um, I don't want to really go into detail about, but it was really, really deep and really amazing.
Eileen McPherson, who is a very big part of the Gather Make Shelter project. Eileen had two collaborators. She started off with Sarah Davis, who did the beautiful bottles towards the end of the gallery. And she did do pieces there. But Eileen is so prolific, she kept like, what else do you got, what else do you got? And Thomas had dropped off this series of houses. And one day Eileen was in the studio, because now with the gr crazy thing happened during the pandemic in the winter, I got a call from Killian Pacific, who's a developer in town, and said, we hear about, we've looked all over your website, you sponsor and, and work with all the populations we're interested in supporting, would you like an inside space? So now we have a workshop in the Pearl District because of nice. the, because of them. It's a studio space, it's a gallery Office. space. We have workshops there and we don't just do ceramics anywhere. We do lots of different materials now. Mm -hmm. But back to um, Thomas and Eileen. So Eileen worked with Sarah and then Eileen is just, she's always, she comes around a lot and we get together and she's like, what are those? So the house that you see presented is that we everyone could put one piece in the show because there's many pieces. So Eileen's piece that, that rose above the rest was the piece that she did with Thomas, which is the little house. Salzman. Salzman is a, really a knockout, incredible poet in town who I've been working with since the beginning, also Street Roots um, artist and poet. And he painted some bowls, but Peter is a writer and, and just a gifted orator and writer and dreamer and creature of the natural world. And he is very, very special. So early on, I asked Peter if he'd like to be the poet laureate for Gather Make Shelter. Peter's frequently found at the the front desk at Gather Make Shelter Project when we're open, spread out, doing his thing. When the library's closed, he had no place to go write. So he would start by calling and saying, can I read poems to you? And I was like, sure. And he would just read and I would record them. And then I said, Peter, I'll record them. He said, I can't go to the library and, and, and write all this. So I said, I'll tell you what, why don't you, I'll record what I can. But he also is the most prolific artist I've probably ever met. And he's constantly writing. And, and they're not just like sweet, they're amazing. I said to Peter when we, when we could finally get together, I said, bring me your stuff and, and I'll type it up. And then he brought it and his writing was so beautiful. And I said, oh, these are so gorgeous. I said, I'm sorry, Peter, but you're gonna have to handwrite all your stuff now because it's really great. And I said, how about if I hook you up with an illustrator? So I hooked him up with an illustrator. Jen Davis goes by the name Cezo Pingo in that work that they do. And Jen also, she is an activist and is a gardener and she has her own CSA. I mean, she is very, very, very up in the natural world. And the two of them just like, unk. They just like hooked in tight. And it was really, really fantastic. So they're still working on more projects. We're probably gonna publish at least two more in the near future. And during this month, we'll let people know that Peter's gonna be reading at um, the Gather Make Shelter Project and the zines are there and, the, and their collaborative works. Mm -hmm.